Jamie from those 11 8th and I'm blowing it up on Capital Chaos. <laughs> Who lie beneath what? Oh, yeah. We've uh, had many questions about that, many uh, presumptions. We've had those who lie beneath dudes before. Those who lie beneath that. the floor. Uh, things. Many things. things. Anything. It's just anything that lies beneath something is usually disgusting and vile and evil and nobody likes it. We try to embody everything that lies beneath. The perpetual underdog, which yeah. is heavy metal. Is there a particular inspiration or perspiration behind the name Those Who Lie Beneath? Pretty much what we just said. I mean, it's, uh, it represents the perpetual underdog. Everything that is, under, whether you think of, you know, if you want to get corny, think of zombies or fucking rats in the sewer. Just, right. just things that people don't take too kindly to. Yeah. And that's what we represent with our music. It's abrasive, it's ugly, it's disgusting, it's evil, it's Con fast. Contemptuous. It's contemptuous. Hate. <laughs> and uh, usually things that lie beneath are. So there you go. An Awakening. Mm. That's the name of her, your, is that, that's your debut it's album. Debut record. Is that's there a so concept cool. behind the album or? Not really a concept. Um, we, I, I wrote lyrics just kind of, you know, whatever I liked. I like to be vile and, you know, talk about the devil and, you know, talk about stuff that I hate. Like uh, one song we got about, it's about, it's called 8 to 5. It's, uh, it's about just hating your job. You want to go in and fucking annihilate everybody. And then I got a song about Ted Bundy and uh, Awaken. Uh, it's actually a song that Kyle wrote. He wrote the lyrics for it. It's just about uh, us fucking the planet up beyond. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah, you fuck. fuck and shit. Fuck, okay. Dude, uh, Motherfucking. You know, fucking up the world beyond recognition, and one day, uh, whoever you may choose in your head to associate with coming and punishing all of us for it, and finally us getting what we deserve as a disgusting pile of shit human race that we are. And Almost like all that oil that's spilling out of that hole that we've drilled into. That is a perfect example of someone coming and saying, you know what, this, this planet is too beautiful for us to be doing that shit, and uh, we're all going to be wiped clean someday. You Nothing drill, forever. you drill, I spill. There you go. Oh, yep. that's terrible. Uh, unknown, now the scene, you guys are from Portland, are you uh, pretty uh, involved in your scene uh, outside of actually just being in a band or? I mean, I guess. We, we try to support our scene as much as we can. We've been uh, trying to get the word out there about Northwest Death Metal for a long time. Uh, it's kind of like our, our thing right now. You know, everybody sees Portland and the Northwest as this really trendy, hippie, indie rock scene and it's not man we you know we're we're trying to make we're it we're trying to make it that way I it mean, is but i mean it's there's not a lot of death metal out yeah. there that's the reality i mean you have like i'm not sure if anyone's familiar with the razorback bands but like stuff like uh, lord gore and engorged and ghoul and stuff like that ghoul no. there's a ghoul from down here Oh yeah? Yeah, from Oakland area. Okay, well, yeah, that may be the same, but it's yeah, in the same yeah. area. It's all yeah. all those Razorback bands, man. But uh, the younger death metal bands, there's a there's a uh, dry spell of youth-driven death metal, and all the kids are. And there's nothing wrong with hardcore. You know, we grew up playing in the hardcore scene. We're metalheads. That's what we do, and uh, we're trying to get kids excited, younger kids excited about real fucking death metal, real brutal death, metal. you know, and. Uh, and that's the ability a, to use um, all six strings from time to time. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. going above the fifth fret, and it's right. exciting stuff. There are, 20. depending, 22 20. to 24, and now 27 sometimes. Yeah. That's correct. Research that shit. It's interesting yeah. stuff. What does uh, eight, seven, seven or eight, nine, ten, eleven strings add to it, if anything? Does it add to it? Absolutely. Yeah. I find it personally. I'm too busy figuring out the first six to, to move to seven yet. I've not mastered the six strings. Maybe then, who knows. But right now, I'm as low as I need to be and I'm as high as I need to be. We'll see in the future, who knows. Maybe those who live, live beneath will be on uh, 18 strings someday, I don't know. Huh.
Are you, do you play any instruments besides your voice? Uh, I mean, I dabble in some different shit, but I'll never touch an instrument in this band. <laughs> yeah, that It'll means you'd have to move equipment. Yeah. Gong, oh, yeah. maybe. Gong. We're yeah, gong. The gong. Gong. Maybe, uh, uh, something. maybe a little triangle action. The harp. Harmonica. Mm -hmm. You guys harp. move a little closer together so I can put oh, both your heads. No, that's all right. It's all right. There we go. It's a little uncomfortable. It's all right. <laughs> Portland. Uh, Portland's known for uh, white power, not just skinhead type things. You yeah. know, I, I played a show there uh, in the 90s, and there were the hammer skins, that's what they were called, and they just showed up and just beat the shit out of everybody. Uh, do they come to metal shows? Okay. No, skinhead, not I want to clear this up right now. Not anymore. That's not true. Not as much as it used not to be. Not as much as it used to be, but it happens. The Nazi skinheads. Nazi skinheads. That stuff got ran out of Portland pretty damn hard. Yeah. Kids, did. kids were going in and kicking the shit out of skinheads. There are crews that are still, without naming names, there are groups of gentlemen still around in Portland that, um, you know, in the 90s, the, the early 90s, they were around to get rid of the skinheads. Now they just kind of lay low because there aren't a lot of them, but every once in a while, sharps just, or just like recently, sharps. Kind of, yeah, kind of. Not, they're not really sharps anymore, but yeah. they still put in work when it needs to be done. And less than a year ago, a Monomarth came through Portland and uh, drew out a, bunch, a huge skinhead crowd. Really, and the, all, the Viking thing. Yeah, the, uh, the Nordic Valhalla. stuff really brought out the skinheads, and uh, some. Uh, some friends of ours that we know came in and took care of it. Annihilated it. And, uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, did the not, well, if the Nazis just show up and they're peaceful and happy, every, they still know. No, they, no, well, they they're, have to they're stomping around the crowd. Oh, I see. Doing well, that and sure. making it very, making it very <laughs> uh, apparent what they're about. Yeah. And, right. Uh, it's not acceptable. Yeah. No, no, no.